Peter, you could, you could probably count on one hand how many companies, startups are, are out there uh, in, in the country right now that are focused on national security in some form or fashion and that have reached so-called unicorn status, meaning a billion dollar valuation or greater. I believe you've funded all or nearly all of those companies. How do you think about this? Well, uh, by, by my count, uh, the number is two. Um, if, we, okay. if, we, if we look at companies started since the end of the Cold War, last 30 years, 1989 uh, to 2019, uh, they're SpaceX and Palantir. Um, and uh, you know, I was co-founder of Palantir, and I was the first outside investor in, uh, in, in SpaceX. So I've been heavily involved in, in uh, both of those. Uh, and I think there's always sort of like a glass half full, glass half empty version. The, you know, the glass half full version is that uh, I, I think innovation will get driven by, um, a lot of innovation gets driven by smaller companies that get started and that scale over time. And so this is absolutely critical um, when not that many people are doing it. If you're one of the few who does it, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and then at the, at the same time, uh, we have to you know, acknowledge that um, in, in the aftermath of the Cold War, um, there were sort of ways in which um, the military uh, um, sort of uh, contracted into the sort of uh, posture where all the funding went to the major, uh, the major primes, and uh, it became much harder for this sort of small to mid-sized entrepreneurial system, system to, to, to build. And, uh, and I think, you know, as, as a venture capitalist, uh, you don't want to invest in tiny consulting companies that always stay tiny. And, the, you know, where there's uh, some, some idiosyncratic use and it sort of goes into, you know, a, a, a cul-de-sac that's a broom closet in the Pentagon or something like this. You, you want to do things that, that scale, that get, uh, that get bigger over time. And, uh, and this has sort of been, the, the, you know, and I, I think there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of, uh, there are a number of times been made in, in, in recent years in, in, the, in the U.S. military to, to try to correct for this, uh, for this sort of procurement process. But I still think we have, we have a ways to go. Which begs the question, I think, because uh, you just mentioned Palantir and SpaceX. Uh, certainly SpaceX is changing the way that rockets are flown. Has it created or have these companies created a template for other startups to follow within the space? Well, there, um, there, there's, certainly, um, there, there's certainly proof that it can be done. Um, it, uh, in both cases, took um, you know, a wickedly long time, so probably um, close to a decade um, to start getting uh, significant contracts from, um, from, from the U.S. military. And, uh, and you know, in, in some ways, they were not conventionally venture fundable. You know, I, I personally funded Palantir. Elon personally funded SpaceX. Uh, we got outside capital maybe six, six years in uh, to, to both, both businesses. And so if you have something where you have a six-year gap and, uh, uh, and can only get funded by, by someone who's putting in tens of millions of dollars um, as a sort of um, um, slightly quixotic project, that's a that's a tricky uh, template to, uh, to to repeat. So I think you know I think there definitely are lessons one can learn from Palantir and SpaceX. Uh, you know we, we made a lot of mistakes. There may be ways to um, to to, um, to sort of uh, develop these things more, more quickly to procure things somewhat faster. But uh, yeah, if you have a decade long process, um, that's uh, that's, that's, you know, we're supposed to have long time horizons, but the time horizons are not that long.